Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. So of late I've been getting a lot of messages and comments on YouTube regarding the older proxy chains video uh, and guide that we created about four years ago and a lot of you have been experiencing issues with it. So this video is intended to actually uh, address those issues uh, you know, to, to, to the extent that is required and it is also a, an updated guide for anyone who is interested in using proxy chains. So the objective of this video is to utilize proxy chains and the Tor service uh, with the goal of actually anonymizing your traffic, right? So uh, the objective being the underlying technique and objective being uh, you're essentially going to traffic or tunnel your traffic through a proxy. And in this particular case, we'll be using the Tor services or proxy. Now, an, interest, an important aspect that you need to consider here is your DNS server that you're using because if you are using a uh, a DNS server that is uh, yeah, that is actually configured or that your DN or your ISP provided you, then there is the uh, the threat or the risk of having your geolocation being leaked uh, as opposed to your IP address, which is also uh, very very important. So I've already covered that in a video, and I'll be touching upon it slightly. Um, so. Uh, by default, proxy chains comes pre-installed on Kali Linux and any other penetration testing distribution. Uh, if you are on any other Linux distribution, you can install it using sudo apt install and uh, you can then type in proxy chains and you then want to install the Tor service. Now I want to make something clear here. We're not installing the Tor browser. We're installing the Tor service, which is a service that runs locally on your on your virtual machine or on your operating system and uh, is actually uh, binded to a particular port on localhost. In our case, it's going to be 9050, and that's the default with the Tor service. All right, so it's important that you understand that the Tor service operates like a, a Linux service or a service on Linux where uh, you can enable it on startup. You, you also need to start and stop it when you need it, right? Or when you actually need to do that. So uh, to install the Tor, uh, the Tor service, all you need to do is type in Tor, and I think I already have them installed, so I don't need to do that. There we are. Um, so the next step, or the next logical step, as it were, is to actually modify the uh, proxy chains configuration file, which can be found under uh, etsy, and the file name is proxychains.conf, right? And uh, again, proxy chains allows you, you know, to tunnel your traffic uh, through various proxies, HTTP proxies, SOX4, SOX5. So you, you might be asking yourself, well, why exactly do we want to use a Tor? Why don't we use any other proxy server? Well, with Tor, we know that we are uh, in, a, to, to a certain extent, guaranteed anonymity. Uh, and of course, we know that there are various attacks uh, based on, 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 on the entry and exit nodes on the Tor network that can actually lead to compromise. Uh, but it's much safer, generally speaking, to actually tunnel your traffic th uh, through the Tor service as opposed to any other SOX uh, or HTTP server that you might find online. Another alternative is to set up your own, which I, I might cover in a, in a future video. Let me know if you actually want me to cover that. Um, so uh, a few things that uh, people didn't understand in the previous video is the ideas of dynamic chains, trick chains, and random chains. Um, as it states right over here, uh, with a dynamic chain, each connection will be done via chain proxies, all chain proxies in the order as they appear in the list. So this means if you have more than one proxy that you're using, uh, it'll actually go through the proxy list dynamically, right? If you have a, uh, again, we're, we're running under the assumption that you have more than one. If you have a strict chain, as it says, each connection will be done via chain proxies, all the proxy chains in the order as they appear in the list. Now, in our case, we only have one. So uh, we, we can pretty much go for a random chain or a strict chain or dynamic chain. It really doesn't matter. In my case, I typically like going for a dynamic chain. Um, you know, as I said, in, in this particular event, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but I just wanted to make uh, I just wanted to make that uh, clear. All right. So let's take a look at some of the other options. You have the ability to actually change your uh, chain length for the random chain which is fine. And then of course you have your proxy DNS requests. So again, to enable a module or an option, uh, just uh, uncomment it and a comment is denoted by the, uh, by the hash uh, symbol right over here. You also have your timeout options, which you can modify based on the type of proxy you're using, which is also something that I wanted to point out. Whenever you're using a, um, a SOX proxy, um, uh, well, when in, in this particular case, we're using, uh, we're using the Tor service, it's going to be much slower 
then an HTTP uh, proxy. Uh, and I, you know, in, in the case of Tor, that's fairly simple to understand. Tor is a relatively slower um, network as opposed to, you know, the uh, any of the other proxies or the other the other networks available. Now, by default on Kali, uh, all the, the defaults will be set to Tor, right? Um, and it's going to add the SOX4 proxy and the SOX5 proxy. There really isn't that much of a difference in terms of uh, security and speed uh, between SOX4 and 5. Uh, SOX5 has a few more improvements, and it's already binded to the correct port, which is 9050 on localhost. However, this is only going to be applicable uh, after we've started the Tor service. All right, so I'm just going to save that. So you want to make sure uh, that you set your SOX5 proxy. If it doesn't already set it for you, just set it to SOX5 127.0.0.1 on 9050. If you are going to be setting up the Tor service on another virtual machine, uh, make sure you actually set the IP correctly, right? And you disable any firewall rule that will block access to that particular port. All right, so I'll write and quit. And now, uh, because we are using a system D operating system or a Linux distribution that utilizes system D as its init system, we need to use that to enable the service. I do recommend running this so that you don't need to do it or you don't need to start the service every time uh, you actually restart your system. So enable, and we can just say Tor, and it's gonna say Tor.service, so we'll enable that. And then we can start the Tor service. I'll just give that a few seconds there. So start Tor service. There we are. And then we can check the status of the service. Um, like so, status. And it's going to tell us that it's uh, loaded and active. All right, so I'm just going to close up Firefox. And now we can run the proxy chains command, uh, which is supposed to be the prefix to any other command that you wish to utilize or you whose traffic you wish to uh, to tunnel and anonymize. So, for example, if I wanted an anonymous session on Firefox that uh, whose traffic is going to be tunneled through the Tor service, I simply say uh, proxy chains uh, Firefox, and then I say uh, I I can specify the website that I want to visit. So DNS leak uh, test dot com and I hit enter and it's going to start up proxy chains and it should start up Firefox there we are and it's going to load up the URL that we actually pointed out and it works the same with other tools so again you might want to give this a few seconds it looks like it worked there and uh, again it looks like we we actually have a valid IP well that's the actually uh, the actual site IP and indeed it has changed my IP address and I can perform a DNS leak test to see if my geographical location is being leaked through DNS and we'll give that a few seconds as I said you can use it with other tools as well for example if I wanted to use it with nmap if I wanted to anonymize my nmap traffic I would simply say the same thing so sudo proxy chains uh, well, in this particular case, yeah, we can just say pseudo proxy chains nmap, and then I can say, uh, you know, for example, um, ss uh, sv, and I can then specify the IP address. So, for example, just specify a test IP. In this particular case, it's on my local network, but it really doesn't matter. I'm just trying to demonstrate that. So you can see it actually went through the it actually went through proxy chains, and the traffic gets proxied that way. So I just wanted to clarify that up, and you can use it with any other commands. Uh, that you wish to use it with. So um, if we check this out, you can now see uh, uh, the DNS server that, you know, that is being used is in Germany. And that's not where I am geographically. So we know that it is working in all traffic within this browser, uh, within this particular browser session is being tunneled through Tor, therefore anonymizing my traffic. Right. So as I said, it's a fairly simple tool to use. You can change it to any other proxy you want. You don't have to use the Tor service or you don't have to pass your traffic through Tor because, as I said, again, it is uh, relatively slow. And in most cases, if you're trying to access websites, uh, many of the Tor IP addresses or exit nodes might be blocked or might be blacklisted. Um, so that's something that you want to take into consideration. So that's pretty much it. Let me know if you are experiencing any other issues that you'd like me to highlight uh, or that you're having, uh, again, as I said, issues with, uh, I can definitely uh, resolve them in, in video format. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.